All right, we are going to work with 5.1 quadratic functions intro. Now we are jumping from 4.1, which was linear functions, just thinking about what do they look like on a graph? How do I shift a line around? What does the slope look like? All that stuff. That's what we did prior to the break. And then we're going to jump into quadratic functions. Now we're going to spend a couple days just with 5.1 quadratic functions. Um, just kind of manipulating them, drawing them, kind of seeing what we're doing with all of that, okay? So the really the schedule here is to do a, a few days with quadratic functions, and then we're going to stop. We're going to do linear functions, quadratic functions together as an assessment, and then that's going to push us into just kind of reviewing and studying and getting ready for an exam at the end of this month, okay? All right, grab your packet. And let's go, let's talk about this stuff. All right, forms of a quadratic equations. We have three forms that we wanna look at. Number one, standard form. You see a little example of a standard form right here, but let's talk about its very generic form. So write this down with me. F of X is equal to AX squared plus BX plus C. That is standard form. So anytime we're talking about put it in standard form, we literally want it in this way to where the x squared term is shown first and then the x term and then the number term, right? So I will remind you though, the word quadratic means that there is a squared component to it, right? So these are all different forms of quadratic equation. Let's look at form number two, vertex form. Obviously, again, you have a nice example of it, but let's talk about it in its generic form. f of x is equal to a times x plus k. Oh, actually, usually we use an h here. x plus h squared plus k. Okay, that's its generic form. Notice, yes, it is slightly different than the standard form, but we could go from vertex form foil everything out, distribute the A, add the K, and we could get it to standard form if we needed to. So um, that's kind of what, what we're looking for. Now here's the beauty of the vertex form, is right in here and right out here, you can see the actual forms, right? So, or the vertex, sorry. So how you read this is this is the X value of the vertex that's the x value of the vertex but remember it's always opposite of what you see there and then out here this is going to be the y value of the vertex and it's exactly what you see out there so let me use this as an example so i'm looking here and here the vertex for this graph is negative three comma negative six. The X value is opposite of what you see on the parentheses and exactly what you see on the outside. Okay, that's the beauty of the vertex form. We get to see the vertex and use the vertex. Okay, let's look at our third form here. Third form is called factored form. So factored form in its generic sense is F of X is equal to X minus X1 times x minus or plus, right? We can do plus, um, x2. Yeah, and that's it right here, right? So you're obviously seeing the form. This is what it looks like with some numbers in it. But what we say is that these opposite of what you see in here are the zeros of the function, right? So up here, let's take this like, like this, x minus five, so where x is equal to five and x plus three, so where x is equal to negative three, these are known as zeros of the function, which is also gonna be known as x-intercepts of the function. Right? So that's going to be another little thing that we're going to be able to kind of hang on to if we want to, if we need it. All right? So let's look at all the forms one more time. 
So we have standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? We're gonna use standard form a lot, so we're gonna kinda dig in with that here in just a minute. We have vertex form. Vertex form, nice thing when it's in vertex form is we can literally see where the vertex is. Now the vertex is known as the turning point of the graph, which we'll dive into here in just a second. And then sometimes you had factored form. Factored form, the beauty of that is you get to see the x-intercepts or the zeros of the graph. Okay? All right. Let's talk about why do we need to know that? Well, here's what we need to know is we're going to be looking at this thing called the parabola. All right? Here's some things that you might want to add to your notes here. The parabola. This is the name of the quadratic graph called a parabola, right? A parabola is a U-shaped graph. It could be U up or it could be U down. So it could be facing up or it could be facing down or opening up or opening down, however we want to say it. It's going to be one of those two U-shaped graphs. That is what the parabola is that we're doing, okay? So let's talk about some characteristics of the parabola. How about the line of sym symmetry? The line of symmetry is simply the line that cuts the U shape in half. Um, what does that mean? Well, check it out. If I were to draw a line right here, that'd be the line of symmetry. Or on the other one, I could draw a line right there, and that would be the line of symmetry. Now, symmetry is the geometric term. That means cut it in half so that the left side is exactly reflective of the right side. We call that a line of symmetry. All right. Um, let's move on to the next thing. Um, let's move on to the vertex point. The vertex point is the turning point of the graph. The turning point of the graph. So let's look at this graph right here. Right? If I was traveling down the graph right here, right here, whoop, whoop, it right there at the very bottom, it turns and it starts to increase. So it goes from decreasing to increasing or on this other one, look, it's going increase, 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 whoop, right there, it changes to decreasing, right? So this is called the vertex. That's called the vertex. The vertex point is the turning point of a graph. So any graph that has different like turns, like it goes from increasing to decreasing, decreasing to increasing, anything like that, is uh, has a point known as the vertex, is the turning point on the graph. Okay, here's what I want you to write down though. Formula for the x value of the vertex. So write this down because this is going to be one of those things we're going to want to put on our, our uh, note card. Okay, for, for the x value of the vertex. So the vertex is a point, right, that is some x value with some y value. It's just a, a literal point. So the x value is equal to the negative b over 2a. All right, like I said, grab yourself a highlighter or just box this in or something, but make it so that it's obvious. This is a formula. We want this written down. We want to be able to use it, okay? So that's the vertex. All right, let's keep going here, and then we're going to use this here in a minute. So it, we're just trying to get some of the terminology down. The zeros of a function, also known as the x-intercepts, this is where the graph crosses the x-axis or when y equals zero, All right? It's where the, the graph crosses the x-axis or also known as when the y equals zero, right? So that's what that one looks like. 
All right, let's talk about the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts are where the graph crosses the y-axis or when x is equal to 0. Right? OK. So those are intercepts, right? So x-intercepts, where the graph crosses the x-axis, y-intercepts, where the graph crosses the y-axis. You're always going to plug in the opposite of variables 0. Right? So when y is equal to 0, you're going to get x-intercepts. Where x is equal to 0, you're going to get y-intercepts. Right? That's going to come in handy for us here in just a moment. OK, maximum and minimum values real quickly. Remember, maximum and minimum, since we are talking about U-shaped graphs, the maximum or minimum point will come at the vertex points, right? So for parabolas, these occur, oops, occur at the vertex points. That's the minimum and the maximum value. That's the maximum, that's the minimum. And these are absolute maximums or absolute minimums because the graph does not go below the minimum and it does not go higher than the maximum. So it's just kind of something to know. So these are all the different things we want to know and we want to utilize them. We want to, we want to make them so that we, um, we can use these characteristics at any time that we want. Okay, flip the page. Let's take a look at a graph with a, the actual equation attached to it. So here's the equation. And let's talk about some things on the graph, all right? First of all, this is a U-shaped graph. How do I know? It's because I know right away that this thing is a quadratic because it's got a square term. So I know it's a U-shaped graph. The second thing I can do is I can look right here in the front and see that it is positive. So it opens up. If the first term is positive, it opens up. If the first term is negative, it's going to open down. So this thing opens up and it's U-shaped. I get that, and you can look at the graph and you can see it, right? So that's going to be nice things about just kind of analyzing before you do anything. Does it open up or down? And you know it's U-shaped because it's quadratic. All quadratic graphs are U-shaped. Okay, let's move into some other things. Um, guess what we call this point and this point that I just circled in green? That's right. Those are called the x-intercepts or the zeros of a function. X-intercepts. So we would say the x-intercepts are where x is equal to negative 1 and where x is equal to 2. All right? So those are, those are great. Those are two things to, to find pretty easily. Um, here's another. Look at this value right there. What do we call that value? That is called the y-intercept. It's where the graph crosses the y-axis. So at y equals negative 2. So I got a y-intercept, got an x-intercept, I got another x-intercept. So those are all different places where it crosses an axis. We call it an intercept there. So one of the only other characteristics we really want to know is, oh, how about that vertex point? Right? which happens to be a minimum on this one because it's at the bottom of the graph. It's the minimum most value on the graph. So we call that a vertex point. Well, what if I need to know the exact value of the vertex? Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to do a little bit of calculation. So go ahead and do this with me it's just as practice. So we're going to say the x value of the vertex is equal to negative b over 2a. Well, um, let me just write real quick. Here's the equation again. Y equals x squared minus x minus 2. So negative b, so look at, look at my b value right now is negative 1. So if I took negative, negative 1, that's a positive 1, over 2 times my, my a value happens to be a positive 1. So it's going to be 1 half. So I know that my vertex is going to be some point that is going to be 1 half comma something. How do we find that something? Plug in the vertex into the equation. So we're going to go like this. We're going to go y equals 1 half 
squared, right? That's the x value of the vertex, minus 1 half minus 2. Okay, so let's work that out. Y equals 1 quarter minus 1 half minus 2. So y equals negative 1 quarter minus 2. So y equals negative 2 and a quarter. This right here is the y value of the vertex, negative 2 and a quarter. Take a look. Doesn't that value right there look like it is at 1 half, negative 2 and a quarter? Yeah, so this right here, that formula is our friend to find the x value of the vertex, and then we can use that to find the y value of the vertex, right? Look at all these great things that we have, right? These are just different um, characteristics of this thing we call the parabola. Being able to find zeros, being able to find y-intercepts, being able to find vertex points, knowing if it opens up or if it opens down, and always knowing that it's a U-shape. That will be great to be able to do on any of the graphs that we need to. All right, so let's turn to the next graph right here, and let's graph the following. Now, the way I want you to graph this is not the old traditional way is plugging in x values and getting y values. Also, not using um, graphing calculators or Desmos. Also, not using things like um, photo math. No, no, no. I want you to use some of our function ideas and notation. What are the things that I want you to be able to do? Well, let's take a look at this. The first thing I know, since I see it's a squared term, I know it's going to be a U-shape. Don't draw yours like that. You just know it's going to be a U-shape. I also know it's going to be an up U-shape because the first thing is positive. So I know it's going to look something like that, but we want to be more specific than just something like that. So... Let's talk about what are some things that we can do. You know the first thing I might do? I know it's a U-shape up, but let's go ahead and find the vertex because the vertex will help us out. So the X value of the vertex is opposite B, that's gonna be positive six over two A. That's gonna be two times one. So my X value of my vertex is three. So actually where X is equal to three is also gonna be my line of symmetry. Remember, we talked about the line of symmetry, and it's going to run right down the middle of the graph. It's the line of symmetry. Okay? So then, we know that the vertex point, remember, vertex is equal to 3 comma something. How do we find the something? Ah, plug it in. Yes. Y equals 3 squared minus six times three. Look, look, I'm just using the equation that's given to me, plus seven, okay? Keep going, so we got nine minus 18 plus seven. All right, let's keep going, negative nine plus seven, and lastly, negative two. Ah, there is my value, so that's gonna be a negative two. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my graph, I'm gonna go over three on the X, I'm gonna drop down two on the Y, I'm gonna put a big fat point right there. That's my vertex point. Right, just found it right there. So now we know, remember again, this thing opens up from here. Now specifically, I, can, I, I need to do one or two other things. I just need to get some more points on this thing. So here's something I could do. I could find the zeros of the function, which is where it crosses the x-axis, and then that's gonna give me enough points to draw it, or I could find the y-intercept, where it crosses this y-axis. Either of those works. I'm gonna be honest with you. Let's go with the easier of those two. Let's find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept of the graph is where the graph crosses the y-axis. Well, guess what happens when the, gross, bleh, the graph crosses the y-axis? It's when x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0. So let's take the equation. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 7. Let's plug a 0 in. So y equals 0 squared 
minus 6 times 0 plus 7. Well, guess what? Why is the uh, y-intercept so nice and easy? 0 squared, 0. So you end up with y equals 7. So literally, we're going to take that. y equals 7 is a y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to put a big old point right there. And guess what? This distance to the line of symmetry has to be the same on the other side because it is, in fact, by definition, symmetric. So I'm going to put another point right there. Look at that. We just got enough to graph our graph. So now we're just going to draw through that line, come on down, hit, and make it curve back up in a U shape. And there we go. Make sure it looks more U-shaped than V-shaped because we know the V-shape is an absolute value graph. Okay? So that's what it looks like right there. How nice is that? Find the vertex, find the line of symmetry, find the y-intercept, and then do that. This is the way I want you to graph right now, just using characteristics of the quadratic, not using like a graphing calculator. Okay? Let's try this one right here. Okay? If you need to, if you feel like, hey, just give me a minute, hit pause and go ahead and try to work this out and then come back and see what we got going here, all right? Here's what I'm gonna do on mine. Let's find the vertex again. Okay, also, since it's positive and it's a square, it's gonna be a U-shape that opens up. So I know that. Okay, vertex. X equals, I always wanna find the X value of the vertex. So go to back to my formula, negative B, so six, over two times A, two. So again, this is gonna be three. So I know my vertex is equal to three comma something. But I also know my line of symmetry is gonna be at x equals three. It's gotta cut this thing straight down and go through the vertex, all right? So let's try this. Let's go y equals three squared minus six times three minus one. So y equals nine minus 18 minus one y equals negative 9 minus 1, and y equals negative 10. All right, we just find the y value of our vertex, negative 10. So now we got our entire vertex point. So I'm going to go 3, negative 10. I'm going to put a big old dot right there, and we'll name that as our vertex. Again, what's a nice, simple, easy thing to do? Let's find a y-intercept. Y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So let's try it. Let's go y equals 0 squared minus 6 times 0 uh, minus 1. So if you do that, y is equal to 0 goes away, 0 goes away, minus 1. Oh. So we're going to come over here. y equals, let's put a big old dot on negative 1 and keep it symmetric. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, over. Boom, we got it symmetric. And let's go ahead and draw a nice little graph. Let it curve like a U shape. Let's go back up through, and there we go. And we got it. That is the equation of the graph. Now again, we decided to use the y-intercept here, where we could have, if, if instead we could have plugged in a zeros for the y, and then we could have found the x-intercepts if we wanted to. It's your choice. That's the nice thing about the characteristics. There's multiple characteristics. We use the one that make the most sense to us. Okay? So write the equation in any form of the following. Okay, let's do these last two really quickly here, and then we'll close this down and let you just get to work. Okay? All right, so here's what, what I need to know. So this actually should say any form of the following. Okay? So the form that I like the best is vertex form because I can literally see the vertex on these things. So the vertex of this one is two comma seven. So go back up to our notes. Let's look at vertex form. And here's vertex form is y equals a x plus h squared plus k, okay? So this is actually pretty easy to start with. We're going to do this. We're going to use that form, and we're going to say y equals some a value, which we're going to have to figure out, x minus 2. It's always opposite on the x of what you see, plus 7, which is exactly what you see. 
So we are so, so, so close right now to having the equation. All I'm missing right this minute is the A value, right? If I had a value for the A, I would be done with this, but I'm not. So what I'm gonna do, again, utilize some values that we know. Well, I, again, like this y-intercept value that I'm highlighting here with red. So that y-intercept value, if you look at it, the y-intercept, and this is true about all intercepts, is when the x is zero, the y is some value, like this one is negative one, right? So check this out. The x value is zero, the y value is negative one. So what if I put negative one equals a times, well, the x value at that point is zero, minus two squared plus seven. Do you see that? That I just plugged in the x and the y values there? And let's just solve it for a, because again, the thing I want here is a to be all by itself. So let's work on it. Negative one equals a times negative two squared plus seven. Let's do the negative two squared to keep in line with order of operations. A times four plus seven. All right, so we need to get the A by itself. So let's subtract seven from both sides. That's gonna give me negative eight is equal to A times four. Well, let's get that four off of the A. Let's divide by four. Looks like I'm gonna get negative two is equal to A. There's the A value. So now what you're gonna do is bring the a value in conjunction with the start of the equation. Let's put it all together. y equals negative two x minus two squared plus seven. And that's what it would look like right there. But -da, da da Okay. Right, and also check this out real quick. Look. It has a negative on the front of this thing, which makes it open down. That's why we have a downward facing or downward opening, opening graph with a vertex at 2, 7, which makes that the maximum value. All right, let's try one more. Let's try this one. I want the equation of this. I'm going to do it again in vertex form, right? Because vertex form is probably the easiest for all of these if you can see the vertex real nice and cleanly. Like the vertex on this one is at two, negative three. So vertex form is gonna look like this. Y equals a x minus two squared minus three. Hmm. What's the problem right now? I need to know the a value. Well, probably the, my, my easiest thing is let's take the y-intercept. The y-intercept is one, so that's when x is equal to zero. So y is equal to one, a, x would have to equal zero on that, minus two squared minus three. Let's finish this thing out. a times negative two squared minus three. One equals a times four minus three. Let's add three to both sides. We're gonna get four is equal to a times four. Oh, that's gonna be nice, because we're gonna divide by four on both sides. And so we're gonna get a is equal to one. So just like we did on the other one, bring this and this together, and you're gonna get y is equal to one x minus two squared minus three. All right. So that's what it looks like right there. So when you are forced to have to come up with an equation, think vertex form, because I think that's gonna be your best bet. Because I could always turn this vertex form into standard form if needed to. I could turn this one to standard form if needed to. All right, so you got some problems on my open math. Let's give those a shot. Sometimes you're gonna be graphing. Sometimes you're gonna be writing the equation. Sometimes you're gonna just be talking about the zeros or the y-intercept or the x-intercepts or does it open up, does it open down, just things like that. I want you to just talk about characteristics, know some characteristics so that we can keep these parabolas um, going. All right, let's get to work.